Coming up, bodega killing. A worker charged with killing a customer. Now the push to get those charges dropped. Strong showers and thunderstorms timing out when they wrap up and when and if we lose the heat. And it's an all-ages throwback in the middle of Manhattan. We strap on the skates for a day at Rockefeller Center's new Roller Boogie Palace. Hey, what's up, friends? Welcome back. This is News 4 Now for July 12th. I'm your girl, Kay Ingram. Now, first up, the Manhattan District Attorney is facing growing calls to drop the murder charge against a Washington Heights bodega worker accused of killing a man inside of his store. Members of the United Bodegas of America met with the district attorney, trying to get charges dropped against Jose Alba. It comes as we are seeing new video of the attack. Police say 35-year-old Austin Simon came behind the counter and shoved Alba. That's when Alba grabbed a knife and allegedly stabbed and killed Simon. Now, Alba is facing a murder charge as of right now, but the United Bodegas of America say it was in self-defense. So this happened back on July 1st. Investigators say that there was an argument when Simon's girlfriend's card got declined. Mayor Adams is stepping up pressure on the Biden administration to get more doses of monkeypox vaccine to the city as soon as possible. According to a letter obtained by the New York Post, the mayor told the president that additional doses are, quote, urgently needed to help stop the spread. And he wants to delay giving out second doses until more people get the first shot. The city is currently reporting at least 223 confirmed cases of monkeypox. Now, they're largely among gay and bisexual men. Nearly 15,000 additional doses of monkeypox vaccine are expected to arrive by the end of this week. But here in the city of more than 8 million, with a large LGBTQ population, local officials say that the amount of vaccine that's been allocated to New York so far isn't nearly enough. In the meantime, the tri-state could be in the midst of a new COVID wave as New York City's average positivity rate tops 15%. Many neighborhoods are reporting numbers significantly higher than that. Like in Woodhaven, Queens, the positivity rate is over 27%. That's the highest in the city. The city's data does not include at-home test results, but in response to the sixth COVID wave, the health department is pushing for more kids who qualify to get vaccinated, while also urging people to wear masks in public indoor spaces and when around large crowds outdoors. Hi there, I'm Storm Team 4 meteorologist Maria La Rosa, keeping an eye on the storms through this evening. Otherwise, it's definitely going to continue to be mild and muggy. 82 degrees still through 8 p.m. It's after that we'll start to see that storm threat wind down. We keep the stickiness straight through tomorrow morning with temperatures into the 70s. But again, that storm threat keeping us busy through the late evening hours and then by tomorrow morning, some attempt at some clearing sky. So we'll get some sun in again tomorrow afternoon. Another very hot day back up into the 90s minus that storm threat. So starting off again, mild and muggy 74 at Central Park for tomorrow morning. 71 in Merrick will be in the mid and upper 60s from Islip Bridgeport from the Hudson Valley and down the shore. All right, y'all brace yourselves because uh, there is a time warp happening in Midtown this summer as Rockefeller Center's world famous ice skating attraction has transformed into Flippers Roller Boogie Palace. So naturally, New York Live just had to strap on their skates and check it out. Roller skating is having a revival, and lucky for us, Rockefeller Center is getting in on the action. That's right, the rink has been transformed into a 70s style reboot of the iconic Flippers Roller Boogie Palace. So today we are trading in our ice skates for roller skates. You ready Let's to do lace it. up? Let's go. So this was an iconic roller skating rink in LA in the late 70s. So this was like the celeb hotspot. Prince, Patrick Swayze, Jane Fonda. If you look on the walls, these are all pictures of people who used to go to this roller rink. So the owner's daughter, Liberty Ross, is the one who brought it here to New York City along with Usher. And like, roller skating is just awesome. We love roller skating. Shall we go? Let's do it. Okay. I think you're just the person that we need to see right now. Listen, you are a roller skating icon, a legend here in New York City. Can you just show us like some moves? How we could how we could look cool when we're here at the All right. For the first one, you step here. Good. <laughs> and come back straight. I was just bidding. Step here. 
Come back straight. Remember to bend those knees too when you're doing that. Keep those knees bent. Mommy. All right, ladies, so I'm gonna teach you both the traditional New York style train. Left, right, left, right. Good. Follow the conductor. As expected. That was a really good time. That was so much fun. And you can have a lot of fun here too. They're open seven days a week, early, late. They have events, so just check the website for all the info. Yeah, you guys have got another quintessential New York moment to be had, and I'm so happy I got to have it with you. Always, always. Come on. All right, and get a load of this next one. Students at one New Jersey university are turning their attention to a toxic jellyfish. Today in New York's Jen Maxfield is here with the warning. So B2 is alive B3 and B4. Students at Montclair State University are studying clinging jellyfish, a species so toxic the young scientists are wearing gloves to avoid getting stung. Just because they're small doesn't mean that they still don't have a big sting. They could leave you in the hospital for a few days and you'd have to take like serious painkillers. Seen here glowing under a fluorescent light, the jellyfish are smaller than a quarter. They're pretty small, but they're pretty potent. Okay, what, what do you mean by like grabbing an image? Well, I mean, you know, so like they're taking some pictures. Dr. Paul Bologna and his students have more than 1,000 clinging jellyfish to research how they react to changes in water temperature and various nutrients information that could help swimmers avoid them. They hold on to things like seagrass and algae in shallow estuaries. So they're sort of in the back bay areas along our coastal areas. They're not right along the beaches. Clinging jellyfish have been found here where the Shrewsbury River meets the ocean. The jellyfish are so small that boaters and jet skiers can't see them to avoid them. Here in Monmouth Beach and all the way up to Connecticut and Rhode Island, the clinging jellyfish have been found in the reeds. They are not an issue for swimmers in the ocean. After being stung, symptoms can be delayed by hours, causing such severe reactions. They could be mistaken for a heart attack. When they get into you, they start to cause your muscles to tense up and not release. So that sort of charley horse feeling. Boaters here along the Shrewsbury River say they know to avoid the seagrass and reeds along the shore. If they beach their jet ski and walk out around into the reeds, um, it's a good possibility that they're going to get this. I, I would definitely suggest not to do that. Clinging jellyfish typically die out above 84 degrees in the water, so the risk of being stung goes down throughout July and August. If you do suspect you've been stung, white vinegar helps rinse away the toxins. In Montclair, New Jersey, I'm Jen Maxfield for Today in New York. All right, friends, that's it for today's show. Don't forget to tune back in tomorrow for more on News for Now. See you then.